Let's begin with the first section of our lecture and this in this section we will discuss the uh, visceral leishmaniasis. What is visceral leishmaniasis? What's the epidemiology of visceral leishmaniasis? And also we will discuss the immunopathogenesis of uh, visceral leishmaniasis. So first, what is visceral leishmaniasis? Visceral is the term used for different viscera or the organs of the body. So viscera is, um, uh, we can say different organs like liver, spleen, all these are involved with leishmaniasis and that's the term called visceral leishmaniasis. Asis is the condition of or the condition caused by leishmania. So visceral leishmaniasis is the involvement of different organs of the body by the infection caused by leishmania. So visceral leishmaniasis is chronic and potentially fatal parasitic disease of the viscera, particularly liver, spleen, bone marrow, and lymph nodes due to infection caused by Leishmania veni. So visceral Leishmaniasis, Leishmaniasis is also, we can say cutaneous uh, Leishmaniasis, uh, uh, subcutaneous Leishmaniasis and visceral. So viscera is the in involvement of different organs like liver, spleen, lymph nodes and bone marrow by the Leishmania dono veni and it's a chronic infection and it's a fatal disease caused by the parasite Leishmaniasis. Visceral Leishmaniasis is caused by Leishmania dono veni complex. That's the uh, sand fly that is the uh, transfer the or is the uh, uh, leishmania don't know any it's the it's transmitted by the sand fly so caused by leishmania don't know any complex and it's the anthroponotic transmission anthroponotic transmission by leishmania don't know any then we have leishmania in phantom in phantom is the uh, zoonotic transmission. So it is caused by Leishmania donoveni complex in which we have Leishmania donoveni, Leishmania in phantom. One is anthroponotic transmission, other is zoonotic transmission. So visceral Leishmaniasis is the chronic fatal infection caused by the protozoan and it is by the uh, mainly involved the liver, spleen, lymph node and the bone marrow and it can be very very fatal. Epidemiology of Leishmaniasis, 90% of cases are in Bangladesh, India, Nepal, Sudan and Brazil. So these are the countries where Leishmaniasis is most common. So 90% cases are in this. We have very big area. These are the areas which are hyper endemic areas. Most cases in Sudan, then we have India, in the Nepal, Nepal, Bangladesh, all these, this region is the region which is mainly affected by Leishmaniasis. So all this green is surrounding India, Nepal, Bangladesh, all this is 
the in hyper endemic region sudan is also very uh, hyper endemic area then we have endemic area of leishmania in phantom and then endemic area of leishmania donovani here if you see these light greenish areas are all the areas where it's leishmania in phantom and these uh, uh, off white areas are all the leishmania dono vani so it's a big big area but you see here uh, it's uh, sudan then we have ethiopia india nepal bangladesh then it's in the iran iraq uh, over there if we go uh, in spain morocco tunisia so all it's a big area of the world lot, lot of countries where we have a hyper endemic area then endemic area for leishmania donovani and leishmania in phantom so two separate species are uh, uh, endemic in different parts of the world so but 90% of the cases of leishmania are in the five countries which include england india bangladesh nepal sudan and brazil so that's the epidemiology of leishmaniasis next immunopathogenesis immunity the immune system of the body we know once the infection occurs then as a result of the infection there is inflammatory process that takes place and during the inflammatory process we have different cells mediated during the inflammatory process different cytokines released these cytokines in turn cause production of different inflammatory uh, uh, mediators like we have interleukins and then we have tumor necrosis factor interferon uh, uh, fact, uh, uh, factor all these are produced during the uh, inflammatory process as a result of inflammatory reaction so immunopathogenesis mechanism of protective immunity then we have mechanism of disease pathogenesis and contributing factors during infection so roughly we label immunopathogenesis into three uh, broad spectrums first the mechanism of protective immunity how it develops we have dc and other innate immune cells present dc other innate immune cells present they lead to th1 promoting cytokines in which we have interleukin 12 interleukin 18 27 and then we have some chemo kinds so these are th1 uh, 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 promoting cytokines from there then we have th1 cell activation in which we have ifn and tumor necrosis factor alpha and ifn gamma so this can cause th1 cell activation and then at this stage we have interleukin 17 acting on this stage which caused m classical activation and o r o s and then this caused the killing of the parasite and then healing so mechanism of protective immunity consists of dc and other innate immune cells which causes th1 promoting cytokine formation including interleukin 12 18 27 and then some chemokines this cause activation of uh, th1 cell activation uh, ifn gamma t 
TNF alpha. At this stage, interleukin 17 acts cause uh, classical activation and O and R O S and all these stages leads to ultimately the parasitic killing and healing. Then mechanism of disease pathogenesis, how the disease progress, differential for giving models parasite species. DC and other innate immune cells at this stage also we have low Th1 promoting cytokines, pro-inflammatory cytokines. This caused Th2 cell activation, which is interleukin 4, 10, and 13. Th1 cell defects, and again Th17 cell activation, which include 17, 21, and interleukin 22. Then again, there is alternative activation dysfunction and PM and polymer polymorphoneutrophil activation dysfunction, ROS elastase activity, and this also caused tissue damage and persistent infection. So this is how the disease progress. All these inflammatory cytokines are released and as a result of re the release of these cytokines pro-inflammatory cytokines we have low th1 promoting cytokines and as a result of this there is pathogenesis of leishmaniasis ultimately lead to destruction of the tissues which occur as a result of infection and there is persistent infection. Contributing factors during infection, we have parasite is the most um, uh, uh, common uh, contributing factor during infection. We have interleukin 2, 10 and tumor growth factor beta and then we have also parasites present. So the in summary immunopathogenesis as a result of the infection by the parasite there is a different changes that occur. There is release of pro-inflammatory cytokines and as a result of low Th1 promoting cytokines, different changes occur including the uh, Th17 cell activation, Th2 cell activation which produce different interleukins which cause the activation uh, and dysfunction and ultimately cause tissue damage and destruction. Similarly, immunity develops again as a result of uh, release of different uh, uh, cytokines and chemokines. This is again in the diagrammatic uh, uh, picture showing the uh, immunopathogenesis sand fly. The bite of the sand fly cause pro mastigote. Pro mastigote enters and then it cause release of uh, 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 interleukin 12, uh, which acts on the natural killer cell. TH1 and this again cause M activation, IFN gamma and then in the host cell, mammalian host which is the non-healing mechanism occurs, there is interleukin 10, uh, tumor uh, uh, growth factor beta and this again cause activation of TH2 which cause release of interleukin 4, 13 and 10, then we have tumor growth factor.
Dr. Uh, Bita again uh, act on different tissues of the body and in this phase it's a non-healing phase. So that's how the immunopathogenesis develop after the sand fly bite and it in, uh, uh, caused the invasion of pro mastigot in the body and then the cycle start and cause immunopathogenesis. So that was all about section one. Thank you for watching scardia.com.